We are Sorted, a group of mates from London exploring the newest and best in the world of food whilst trying to have a few laughs along the way. <laughs> we've got chefs, we've got normals, and a whole world of stuff for you to explore, but everything we do starts with you. Hello, I'm Jamie and this is Barry. This week, chips and dips, three ways. Hello everyone, my mate Ebers here loves chips with dips. Pardon? And we have three of them in front of us today. We have a really quick, simple one. We have a gluten-free option and wait for it, a sweet option too. We're going to show you how to make all three. We're going to compare them at the end. But first, do you want to kick us off, Jay? Yes, yes I do. If you're going to have chips and dips, you've got two options. You can go to the shops, you can buy some chips, you can buy some dips. But you're watching this video on a cooking channel, which means you want to go down the other option, which is to make your own chips and make your own dips. And if you're going to make your own chips and your own dips, why not make life as simple as possible? That's what we're doing today. For my baked tortilla chips, I'm going to be using tortilla wraps, onion powder, garlic powder, oil, salt and pepper. And for my pimento cheese dip, I'm going to be using cheddar cheese, pimento peppers, cream cheese, Greek yogurt, and a take on salt and pepper, it's celery salt and cayenne pepper. And obs, I'm gonna be joined in the kitchen today by my friend over here. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mix the oil, salt, pepper, garlic powder and onion powder into a bowl, cut my tortilla wraps into eighths, squidge them around the bowl, lay them out onto a baking tray and pop them into an oven for about five, to 10 minutes until they go nice, golden brown and crispy. Don't let them go too far because they will crisp up as they cool down. Whilst they crisp up in the oven, we can get on with our dip. Now, how simple is this? Put all of these into here, whiz them up. Spoon the dip into a bowl, find the most pretentious board that you can find to serve your chips on, and you're done. I haven't had a pimento dip since Virginia. Okay, I like that, mm. but what if you wanted a lentil, slow carb version, which wasn't made of tortillas. Said nobody ever. Gluten free. If you are more of a slow carby kind of guy or girl like me, then we can sub out our white tortillas for some homemade lentil tortillas. And it's also gluten free. Here's what I'm gonna use. Red lentils, water, olive oil, parsley, fennel, and salt. Broad beans, tahini, feta, creme fraiche, lemon, mint parsley, olive oil, and some sesame seeds that have been toasted. And obviously I'm the star of the show, but here's my supporting act. Something that I did last night, and it definitely wasn't Ben, was take these dried red lentils and rinse them under a tap, then put them in a specific amount of water in a bowl and leave them overnight. If you want to make these yourselves, you'll want to know that exact amount of water so you can get the whole recipe down below. Now the reason that it needs to be exact is because it's then going into a liquidizer along with parsley, fennel, salt, and olive oil, and it's gonna be liquidized. Lovely. I've had a really good non-stick pan on the heat, preheating, and now I'm gonna pour in my batter, spread it about, cook it, two minutes, either side, repeat. Once I've got three or four done, I'm then gonna cut them in half. Half again, half again. I'm gonna basically turn a circle into eights, and I'm gonna do that three times and then they go into the oven at 190 degrees Celsius to crisp up. 20 to 25 minutes. For about 20 to 25 minutes. Let's make a dip. Now, broad beans, absolutely phenomenal when they're in season. Gonna need about 45 minutes to de-shell them all. Good job I did that last night. Definitely wasn't Ben. Oh, don't do it like that. Broad beans go into my food processor. Break some feta up in. Tahini, oh lovely. Mint. 
and the rest of my parsley. And that's all getting blended up in my food processor. And while it blends, I'm gonna squeeze in some juices of some lemons, the juice of a lemon. And look at that. Dip, bowl, sesame seeds, olive oil, chips, plate, food, mouth, others, gutted, Mike wins. Uh-huh. All the uh -huh. shades of green. Mm. Uh-huh. Mm. Uh-huh. But how about we wind back the clocks to one of our favourite recipes from a couple of years ago, our own pop-up, sweet chips and dips. Now this is annoying because I know how good it is. Mm. OK, we've had wheat tortilla chips, we've had lentil tortilla chips. My version is corn tortilla chips, and I'm also making a Mexican caramel sauce called cajeta, and it needs bicarbonate of soda, goat's milk, sugar, cinnamon, and vanilla. Then I'm going to fry off the corn tortillas and toss it in cinnamon sugar. To make the cinnamon sugar, I'll need this. This takes about an hour or so, but it's really easy. Bicarbonate of soda, place it into a small bowl and top it up with a little bit of milk. Now we're using goat's milk because that is traditional for the Mexican caramel. You can also use whole dairy milk. The rest of the milk gets heated in a pan with sugar, a cinnamon stick, and a dollop of vanilla extract. Once the sweetened milk is just about simmering, add in the bicarb you've dissolved in that little bit of milk. It might foam up a little bit, not a problem. Take it off the heat, just let it cool, let it bubble away. Then back onto the heat and a gentle simmer for about an hour. And after about an hour or so, it goes this wonderful caramel colour. Be bold, you want it quite dark and then take it off, scoop out the cinnamon stick and leave it to cool. Making your own spice sugar is really simple, just in a multi-mill blitz up sugar. And in this case, we're just going with cinnamon stick, but you could add star anise, cloves, anything you like to make your own spice mix. Nothing new here. Cut bought tortillas into eights. Heat a pan of vegetable oil because instead of pan frying and then baking, or in Jamie's case, simply baking, we're gonna fry our corn tortillas. You want 180 degrees Celsius, and then lower in your corn tortilla wedges, one at a time, and don't overcrowd the pan. Once they're golden brown, just scoop them out, drain them on kitchen paper, and then while they're still warm, toss them in that gorgeous cinnamon sugar powder. And that's why I use the multi milk it gets it super fine. Ah, very different, see? Mm. But before we dig in, can we just point out that is the best looking dip on the table? If you're talking about glow in the dark. I yes. don't like cheese. <laughs> Why are you even here then? Because Barry's not available. <laughs> <laughs> right, grab a chip. I don't know why I'm handing you a chip. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Why do we swap there? Grab a chip. <laughs> oh, that is a hefty dip. Well, we're going to double cheers. Now that we've got this. Cheers, cheers. Can I? Cheers. Oh, oh it's it's kind of de-dipped. Cheers, cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah. That is punchalicious cheese. <laughs> You're not big on cheese, are you? No, I will remove myself from this one. <laughs> that is strong cheddar. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, though. You get a lovely, lovely rounded sort of peppery kick at the end, don't you? Mm -hmm. The pimento comes through, the cayenne comes through, but also the little tang of the yogurt and the cream cheese. That tastes so much nicer after you've swallowed it. <laughs> Can I just say, the seasoning on your tortilla chips is outstanding. Oh, thank you very much. It is outstanding. But that is so much better than store-bought. Yeah. But imagine if you were gluten-free, because I would make you these. You like slow carbing. I do. Don't you? These are made of pure lentils, these chips. Cheers. Cheers. Genius. Oh, I don't know if this is actually a taste or a way to describe taste, but that tastes vibrant. It looks vibrant as well, but I know you're coloured blind. <laughs> it's the lemon and the mint, but also the saltiness and the creaminess of the feta. Really good. And then the body comes from broad beans. 
And I know it's a bit of a hassle to pop all those broad beans. I know because I did them all. It was a big hassle for me to <laughs> pop all those broad beans. But you could I'll equally you. make that with peas. Think of summer picnic, summer barbecue, garden party, whatever you're throwing, have a couple of those dotted around on the tables yeah. and then people can chop and change. Yeah, but Ben, I've had my savoury, very cheesy. I've had my gluten-free slow carb option. I need some dessert. Ta-da! Oh! That there <laughs> is the tip of a dip on a chip. <laughs> Cheers. 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 <laughs> Triangles up. That is the ideal way to confuse people as well. Why? Because no one's going to guess what that is if you put that on the table. This is naughty, not just fried chips, but caramel as well. Cards on table time. Ebbers, what are your thoughts? The baked chips, for me, take it. As delicious as these are, just because they're simplistic. You don't, I've done that before, you don't even need to cut them into wedges. Bake them whole and then just snap them into shards. Mm. However... You're gutted that you've only just found that out, haven't you? <laughs> However, this is always a surprise and always gets a wow. And I know there's a bunch of people that side of the wall waiting, waiting to come and finish them. That is very true. Jay, thoughts? If you just buy chips and dips, you're going to eat them without even thinking about it. And you get to the bottom of the bag and you go, how did I do that? I don't think you'd do that with any of these because I think there is a flavour explosion. This is probably the one that I'm going to make on a regular basis. This absolutely serves a purpose, and deliciously so. And so anyone who is either gluten-free or looking for a lower carb option and still wants to enjoy chips and dips, they are not gonna be disappointed by that. In fact, they're gonna be over the moon and doing backflips because they can still have chips and dips. I would have to say, when I think chips and dips, I think that. Yep. But I don't even think that. That, that is more than I can think. <laughs> And therefore, I think that is outstanding and that anyone looking for or who's clicked on this video for chips and dips, that's it. I would make both those dips at the same time and probably have those chips. Put them in a sandwich with salad cream. <laughs> now you are on. They are super simple though, so you can give them a go at home. All the recipes are down below. And then you can tell us which is your favourite or which one would you most like to dip? Thank you for watching. If you liked it, give it a like and make sure you subscribe for new videos every Wednesday, every Sunday, four o'clock. Why not ring the bell? Oh, Do why it. not ring the bell? As we mentioned, we don't just make top quality YouTube videos. No. We've built the Sorted Club, where we use the best things we've learned to create stuff that's hopefully interesting and useful to other food lovers. Check it out if you're interested. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in a few days. I'm afraid you just got to stick your tongue in the bowl. Hi. Mm, hi.